Welcome to a tutorial on circuit theory and today we're here to discuss about the superposition theorem. Okay, so this uh, theorem that we're basically going to discuss today, okay, it's one of the most important theorems in uh, circuit theory and is quite widely used in order to simplify networks with multiple voltage or current sources. Okay, so keeping that in mind, the superposition theorem okay, has a particular statement and I'll just be showing that to y'all in a very short while, just hang on there. Okay, so there's the statement of the superposition theorem. It says that uh, if a multiple voltage or current sources, sorry there, it won't be A out there, I'll just, you know, cancel that. That's my mistake. Okay. There you go. So now it states that if multiple voltage or current sources are acting simultaneously in a linear network, you'll know what a linear network basically is, so I'll not get into that details over here. So it says that if multiple voltage or current sources are acting simultaneously in a linear network, the resultant current in any branch is the algebraic sum of the currents that would be produced in it when each source acts alone replacing all the independent sources by their internal resistances. Okay, so let's just take here a network uh, for example. Okay, so I'll just be bringing that over here. Just kind of hang on. Okay, there you go. So here we have a linear network. You know what a linear network is. Okay, it's the one, okay, for the ones who don't know that it's basically constituted of, you know, um, resistances and all other you know uh, circuit elements that uh, well that is of course uh, I mean in which the current and the voltage parameters okay vary linearly with each other and they can also be you know um, I mean the network will basically look the same if we view it from either of the left or right sides okay so that's exactly what a linear network is okay so Keeping that in mind, so this is our example of a linear network, okay? So it says that in a linear network, the resultant current in any branch is the algebraic sum of the currents that would be produced in it when each source acts alone, replacing all the other independent sources by their internal resistances. Okay, so with this network, we're supposed to get, you know, uh, branch currents in each of the branches over here. That means uh, we'll have a current component flowing through R1, through R2 as well as R3. Okay, so if we basically uh, try to solve this, uh, you know, network the way it is, uh, well, in some cases, uh, although it's a simple network, it'll be easy for this one. But when it comes to you know complicated networks, the job becomes difficult with multiple sources. So in that case, what this theorem is trying to uh, basically do over here is simplify the whole process. So in that case. Uh, I'll just show you how, how to solve this network with uh, this superposition theorem over here, okay? So, and that'll be basically um, in, uh, provided in very you know, short and precise steps over there, okay? Okay, so we just uh, straight away go to the uh, steps in solving network. Okay, so uh, to begin with, we have the step number one, which states that Keep a single voltage or current source and remove the others in the network. Okay, so we go back to a network. There it is. So we can see here in this network there are two voltage sources. Okay, so there's V1 to the left and there's V2 to the right. Okay, so since this network is of course a multiple uh, voltage source linear network, so as uh, point number one states in the steps, it says that we have to remove um, either one of the uh, voltage sources and just keep a single voltage source active in the network. So we either have to remove V1 or V2. Okay, so I just choose to remove V2. Now you'll know how to remove the uh, sources um, as you'll have learned back in the previous tutorials on circuit theory. It says that if we have a voltage source, we'll just basically short this path. And if we'll have a current source, we'll just open the required terminals across which it of course is connected. Okay, so since it's a voltage source, we'll just basically short it down. Okay, and doing that, our network will basically look something like this. Uh, just kind of hang, hang on there. There you go. 
So we have this single voltage source V1 and the V2 that was the source uh, in the original network. Okay, it has just been shorted. Okay, so so now uh, depending upon this present network, okay, we need to you know, proceed to the step number two. Okay, so step number two states that find the branch currents for the particular source. Okay, so we have this uh, source V1 included within uh, this uh, you know simplified network over here uh, with the help of superposition theorem, and now we need to find each of the branch currents. So uh, by applying the basic laws of circuit theory, I mean uh, KCL and KVL, we'll just uh, you know assume or rather basic network analysis uh, just uh, you know tells us that we need to assume the branch currents. Okay, so we just take this one as let's say I1 dashed. Okay, and now the current, this I1 dashed, this current would basically be flowing about this loop, but it'll divide right here at this particular node. Let's just call it node X. Okay, and let's say we just call this one as node Y. So at this node X, this uh, current I1 dashed would just divide into two uh, components okay one would pass through that of R2 and the other one through R3 so let's say the uh, one component you know passing through that of R2 let it be called I2 dashed and let's say the uh, current passing through R3 be called I3 dashed okay so with the help of this one over here we'll first calculate uh, the uh, value of this branch current I1 dashed okay so there you go so I1 dashed would just be given by V1 divided by the equivalent resistance of this entire network. So that would be something like, uh, okay, so we got here, let's say, yeah, R1 plus R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3. Since uh, R2 and R3 are in parallel, if we just do this one. Okay, so now since we got uh, I1 dashed over here, we need to know the voltage that would basically fall across uh, that of the uh, nodes X and Y. Okay, so we just call this one as VXY. Okay, so that will be just given by um, yeah, that will just be um, here, it will just be given by uh, I uh, yeah, just hold on a second there. Okay, so there was a little referral to the figure over there, and now I remember it all. So it'll be I1 dashed uh, multiplied by R2 R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So there you go. And now once we have this uh, parallel voltage right o I mean occurring across the uh, terminals X I mean the nodes X and Y so then uh, for that um, once we have this voltage we'll just divide I mean we'll just you know divide this uh, voltage with R3 okay in order to find this uh, current I3 dash that is supposed to enter through R3 since uh, the voltages would be the same uh, across R2 and R3 since they're in parallel connection with each other so uh, just by uh, yeah just trying to find out our i3 over here so now we got vxy okay now i3 dashed would just be equal to vxy divided by r3 so that will just produce i1 dashed multiplied by r2 by r2 plus r3 okay there you go so here we have uh, I3 dashed over here and now from this one we can just say that uh, now if, we le if let's say uh, we need to find um, I2 dashed also okay so now we got the branch currents I1 dashed okay we got the branch current I3 dashed and lastly we need to find out I2 dashed over here so uh, since we know I1 dashed and I3 dashed over here we can pretty easily find out I2 dashed in somewhat this manner. I2 dashed will be equal to I1 dashed minus I3 dashed. So there it is our first equation. Okay so I'll just call it number one. Okay so that's uh, the first equation from this uh, network between the uh, branch currents. Okay so now once this step is executed now we move on to step number two. It states that repeat the process for all the voltage and current sources. Now, the process is actually uh, that we have, you know, executed back in the steps 
1 and 2. So we need to do it again for uh, the voltage source V2. Okay, so in order to do that, we shall you know modify our uh, original network a bit, and it'll basically be looking something like this. Yep, there you go. So uh, as you can see over here, we have kept uh, only the voltage source V2 and shorted. I mean, just we've uh, uh, removed the uh, voltage source V1. Okay, and we're now going to do the same things uh, that we did for uh, V1 back in the previous steps. Okay, so now we'll have uh, you know the branch currents due to uh, the voltage source V2. Okay. So there obviously will be a current component I2. Let's say we just call them I2 double dashed. For I mean just uh, this current component will be flowing through that of R2. And now through R1 we'll have the current component I1 double dashed. And through R3 we'll have I3 double dash flowing through the net network. Okay. So now these are the branch currents. Okay for that of voltage source V2. And now, first of all, we, uh, if we just you know, judge from the direction of these uh, you know, branch currents over here, we'll basically see that the uh, main current okay, in the network, that's I2 double dashed, basically divides into two components, one through R1 and one through R3 from the node X. Okay? And, uh, with this configuration over here, we'll have R2 in series and R1 and R3 in parallel. So we'll just uh, obtain uh, I2 double dashed somewhat this way. Okay, I2 double dashed will be equals to that of, uh, yeah, will be equals to that of uh, V2 divided by the entire uh, resistance of this network. So that'll be R2 plus R1, R3 divided by R1 plus R3. So there you go. We have I2 double dash now. And now we need to find the voltage that would occur across the uh, you know nodes X and Y. So we just call it VXY in this case and that will basically be given by I2 double dashed multiplied by R1, R3 okay, divided by R1 plus R3. So there you go. And now once we, uh, sorry there, just a little slip of hand, okay that's better. So once we have uh, a VXY, now we can find uh, the current components that flows through R3 and R1. Since VXY is actually the voltage, okay, that would appear across R3 and R1 uh, in the same manner uh, as it happened before since uh, VXY, I mean since R1 and R3 are basically in a parallel connection across the uh, points X and Y in this network. Okay, so uh, now since we have VXY, we're going to find I3 double dashed. Okay, so I3 double dash would basically be given by as VXY divided by R3. Okay, so and that would basically uh, be, uh, so here from here uh, we have VXY be given in terms of I2, so we'll basically be uh, getting I3's value in terms of I2 as well. So it'll be I2 double dashed multiplied by R1 divided by R1 plus R3. Okay, so there we go. So now once we have uh, the value for I double dashed, we can easily find the value for I1 double dashed also, just by subtracting I3 double dashed from I2 double dashed. Okay. So here, um, I1 double dashed would basically be equal to I2 double dashed minus that of I3 double dashed. Okay, so there you go. That's uh, the equation number two, okay, obtained for voltage source two. And now, if we just go back, we'll have uh, the equation number one, okay? So I'll just uh, copy it in a moment. So there you go, we have uh, brought the equation number one right beside equation number two, so that it's easier for you all to compare uh, both of them. Okay, so now from these two equations over here, we're basically uh, gonna be obtaining, okay, we're basically uh, gonna be obtaining uh, the values of, uh, you know, I2 and R I3, I mean I1, I2 and I3, uh, okay. First we need to, you know, um, solve or rather find these values as well from these two equations and then we find Finally, whatever uh, current components that we have here, that's I1 double dashed and I1 single dashed, we should basically be adding each of them depending upon their directions, of course. So now, for uh, in order to find the actual current uh, through the, uh, you know, the actual network over here, uh, there you go. So we'll have 
actually a net, I mean a current through R1 known as I1, a current through R2 known as I2, okay? The directions that I'm just providing over here are all arbitrary, so kindly just don't go by them. Calculate yourself and find out. So, and through R3 we'll be having the current component I3. So in order to find the actual values of the uh, currents over here, uh, using these two equations, okay, well, basically, since we've got the values of uh, the uh, respective uh, current components, okay, so now uh, using the um, these two equations, we shall basic basically, you know, find out uh, the value of I1 double dashed from 2 and that of I2 single dashed from equation 1. And after that, we've got all the current components, okay, we'll basically be adding them. So, let's go to our network uh, once again over here. So for, from the network uh, that uh, had only V2, we can see, I mean for the voted source V2, we can see that the direction of I3 double dashed and over here for the network that of V1 and I3 single dashed, both are in the same direction flowing through that of R3. So we just come quickly over here and, you know, um, come to the conclusion that I3 would be actually I3 single dashed plus I3 double dashed, okay? And then again, we need to find out I2 and I1 as well. So let's see what we get for them. So going back to this network for V2, we can see that the direction of I2 is, I mean I2 double dashed, is uh, somewhat anti-clockwise. While from uh, the previous network for V1, we can see that the I2's, uh, I2 single dashes uh, direction is clockwise. So we just shall basically take I2 single dashed as uh, the positive direction. So, uh, well, we shall basically uh, do that over here, okay? So we'll take I2 uh, single dashed as positive since it's in the clockwise direction, okay? And thereby subtract I2 double dashed from it since it's in the anti-clockwise direction, okay? So again, uh, we go to the network for V2 and we find that I1 double dashed is also anti-clockwise in direction and for that of uh, V1, we can see uh, that I1 single dashed is of course clockwise in direction. So we shall take I1 single dashed as positive once again and find the value of the net current I1. So it'll be I1 single dashed minus I2 yeah, I1 double dashed. Okay, so with these relationships that we have over here, we'll be actually finding out the uh, actual values of I3, I2, and I1 respectively. Okay, so with the actual values obtained over here, we have our network, uh, I mean the branch currents found out and our network solved. Okay, so one more thing I'd like to say that if any one of these uh, resultant currents, either I1, I2, or I3, may be uh, found negative, okay, then just, uh, don't, don't just panic out. It just means that the direction that we've assumed uh, in order to solve our network is just not the direction of the current, it's just the opposite one, okay? So with that, we come to the uh, end of our tutorial discussion on superposition theorem. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and it's a short goodbye for now, and thanks for watching.